gets blamed for bringing to the forefront that President Biden can do more and is not doing more. But then somehow it's our fault. Progressives. That it's progressives. It's quote unquote activists that are the out of step with the Democratic establishment that all of a sudden we're the ones that are the problem and not the ineffectual federal government that doesn't that wants to fall short in every in every crisis that we are being met with. And so, you know, I, I guess here I you know, I, I don't know, Waj, if honestly, if we're just too late, right? Mm. Like, I don't even know if and what steps can be taken, because one of the other announcements that came out is that not one country that was a part of the Paris Climate uh, Agreement is on track to deliver what it was that they signed up to deliver. Not one country. So it's not just the United States that was reinstated into the Paris Climate Agreement in 2021 when Joe Biden was sworn in. But the fact is, ain't nobody on track to actually reduce emissions, to actually tackle this crisis. And yet you have all of these PMs, all of these presidents around the world that are now sounding an alarm that scientists sounded 20 and 30 years ago. Yeah. So two things about that. You give props to Western Europe that actually did its job since 1990 and has reduced greenhouse gas emissions like far better than any other country, right? And the goal, like you mentioned, for those who don't know, U.S. has this goal, which was to cut U.S. emissions uh, roughly in half by the end of this decade, right? The target is aimed at keeping the climate stable at 1.5 degrees Celsius yes. of warming compared to pre-industrial levels. We're, by the way, right now at 1.2 degrees Celsius. And already, like you mentioned, it's 114 in Europe, right? The thing about climate change, though, even though Western Europe did its job, as you, if you've been paying attention to this conversation, Western Europe is cooking right now because guess what, ladies and gentlemen, climate change doesn't care about borders, uh, no, <laughs> because Herschel Walker said that you can't invest in clean energy because then that good air would float over to China's bad air and then their bad air would come. Was he wrong? Uh, 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 you know, for those who think that we're being too cheeky, Danielle is actually <laughs> quoting Herschel Walker. He literally, and I'm, I'm using the word literally because we're old heads. So we're using the word literally the way it's meant to be used. This fool literally believes that, right? Yeah, but no, yes. the climate change doesn't work that way. So here you see Western Europe, like, holy shit, man, we did our job to cut greenhouse gases. U.S. effed up, China effed up, Canada effed up. It doesn't matter, ladies and gentlemen, we're in this together. And so we're going to fail. And now what they're saying, Danielle, is forget 50%. We're lucky if we're going to cut it by 25%. And already, you know, the one thing which is, which is super sobering is we thought just a couple of years ago, we thought, you know what? By 2050, it's going to get really bad, but eh, we'll be dead by then or we'll be old. No, no. <laughs> it's true. You know, it's we, true. Remember that? we're like 2070. This was about four years ago. Folks who are listening, we thought the conditions that we're experiencing now, we'd be experiencing in 2070 and 2050. So we were afraid about our kids' generation. We're like, eh, we'll be old or we'll be dead. Nope. We're living right now in some of the worst case scenarios. And by the way, this is some dark humor, but we need dark humor for this conversation. Like, I'm going to tell my kids, hey, kids, enjoy it. This is about as cool as it's ever going to get. This is like, the these, good old days. But this is a thing that I'm really terrified about that I feel like once again, the dots are not being connected to the American people, to the world, right? Mm. Because this is a global problem. And when we love to say global citizenship, but there is no community mindedness in this world, right? It is always about silos and about this country is better than this. And what about America first and blah, blah, blah. But like you're saying, it It is not something that you can just manage in, let's say, New York and then hope that you're not going to be affected by what is happening in China, by what is happening in Texas and all of these places. And so, you know, what about our water? That's right. What happened? Like we are in a drought in so many different areas. And what does that mean? That means farmers, right, or the industrial farm complex is no longer going to be able, right, to deliver us the kind of produce that we need. You're not going to be able to water down and feed the livestock that we all rely on, right? You're not going to, like this series of events, there's right all now connected. a water uh, a water so shortage in a majority of places in the, 
uh, on the globe. And then there's also a food crisis that is happening. So we wanted to talk about, oh, it's inflation and let's talk about the economy, stupid. Well, if you're paying now 18, 18% more for your grains, right? And you're paying 20, upwards of 20% more for your meat. What do you think is going to happen in the next year or two as entire flocks and farms perish in this country and around the globe? It's an interconnected ecosystem and it makes us, you know, you think that the pandemic that flattened right. all of us, but flattened all of us unequally would make people realize how connected and dependent upon each other that we really are. And the frontline workers who oftentimes were poor and black and brown that we depended upon who didn't have access to healthcare, you know, the heroes, we needed them as we were stuck in our home, like, oh my God, my wealth did not protect me. My whiteness did not protect me. Me being in the suburbs did not protect me from this pandemic, a COVID who did not care about zip codes or ethnicity, who feasted on everyone, but especially those who didn't have access to healthcare and who had pre-existing conditions, you know, it went after black and brown and poor folks uh, unequally. And what we're witnessing with climate change, the same thing is that we're all connected. We need water. We need workers. We need food. We need land. We need clean air. Oh, by the way, everyone cares about a national security and borders. We want to keep those darkies out. Here's a question. When those <laughs> sea levels <laughs> rise in New York and mm. D.C. and Florida and California mm -hmm. and you have white climate refugees. Come on. And if these learn lands burn in Western Europe and all these white folks got to go to brownish countries, how do we want them to treat these white Europeans and white Americans, right? People don't think about this. Like, do we want them to revisit uh, uh, our cruelty, you know, uh, upon them? Something to think about that. We're not talking about climate refugees, ladies and gentlemen. And, and to talk about the inequity right now, and I, and I think this, you just got to give the shout out. Africa and African countries and, and these countries that are near the equator, right? They're the ones who are suffering the most from climate change. Yep. We're talking about droughts and, and, and lack of water. These countries, these African countries, oftentimes that are seen as a scourge, right? And all oh, these black folks and brown folks, these poor countries are not responsible, Danielle, nope. for the greenhouse emissions. They are being punished for our greed. They're being punished for U.S. and China and Europe, right? Like they're only responsible for like 4%, I think. It's mostly America, to be honest, that is responsible for this output and China. And so speaking about greed, we have to connect the dots for folks. And so people listening right now are like, man, how come Congress isn't doing anything? We, we voted for Democrats. Well, ladies and gentlemen, here's an answer. There was an opportunity for Democrats in Congress to use a loophole to pass this very expansive uh, legislation, which would tax certain companies and use that money to then invest in climate change proposals. Who killed that, Danielle? Was it the progressives? Was it the squad? Can you tell Americans who killed that amazing landmark deal that President Biden and Janet Yellen and everyone tried their best to get through and they could have gone it through if it was not for? Joe Manchin. Joe Manchin! Um, because who is responsible for killing most progress in this country? Uh, white, cis, quote-unquote, Christian, moderate men. That's who right? They're the ones that come in and say, no, no, no. But we don't then elevate the fact that Joe Manchin and his entire family get all of their wealth from coal. We don't elevate and talk about, and even in his speech, Joe Biden is talking about Republicans. And I said, uh, okay, but there's <laughs> a whole other person, right? Who is a Democrat in D only that is responsible for your administration not being able to do a goddamn thing. So maybe, and people say, Danielle, do not call out Joe Manchin because then he'll just walk right over to the Republicans and they'll be in power. Tell me what would be different. Mm. Tell me what's different than what we are experiencing right now because I am so fucking tired of Democrats operating from a place of fear where we are already living in the horror movie. So you might as well start to recognize that it doesn't matter whether you try and put Joe Manchin on blast or not, because the reality is Republicans have always shown us who they are. Right. Democrats, how, however, have always promised to be better. 
but then also show us who they are. So I'm like, I don't know why the president at this point in time isn't just saying, you know what? I have all of these wonderful plans as a way to deal with the compounded crises that every single American family in this country, regardless of race, religion, ethnicity, culture, gender, identity, what have you, is facing. And I can't get that done because of one person. This mother Joe Manchin. right here. This mother I would just right here. That's what I would do. 